Welcome to Linebacker Core Drill Development. I'm Coach William Lund from Hope College Football. The first set of drills I want to talk about are EDDs, or Everyday Drills. These are drills that we conduct on a daily basis, and they're the fundamental movements that we will see throughout practice, throughout game time, in any situation our linebackers are in. Each drill name becomes a coaching point that our players can identify with as they assess and evaluate themselves on video. The first drill in our sequence of everyday movements is known as step gather. This is our basic movement for our linebackers. It's essentially our read step. We begin the movement by popping our feet on the coach's command and then step in the direction of the back action, or in this case, of the coach action. We want to step and gather, working at a 45 degree angle. Your initial base will be the same base you end with, emphasizing that we want to maintain great body position throughout the movement. We want to maintain body position as well as proper foot placement to maintain balance. We'll also work the drill through a number of various different visual keys, such as counteraction and pass drops. The next movement in our everyday drills is known as shuffle. This is the most basic movement we use throughout our linebacker play. We want to make sure that our toes are pointed forward, that we are working off the inside balls of our feet. As we shuffle, we want to make sure that we are knock kneed. We want to create power angles by shifting our knees inward towards our midline. Our feet should work to no closer than hip width. We want to make sure that our shoulders and head are level with good bend in our ankles, knees, and hips. We want to make sure our toes are pointed forward and that we are working off the inside balls of our feet. Working to our knock knee position will help create our power angles so we can quickly change direction. A common mistake you'll notice from your players is the tendency to point their toe outward as they shuffle. This issue will make it more difficult to change direction with your tendency for your hips to track the path of your foot. The next movement of our everyday drills is known as stutter. This movement is used to keep our base and feet alive as we confirm our keys, whether they're backfield keys or line keys. We want to make sure our toes are pointing forward, that we are pushing off the inside balls of our feet, and we want to make sure that we are not knee creating power angles by shifting our knees inward. Our feet should be no closer than hip width apart, with our shoulders and head level with good bend in our ankles, knees, and hips. The premise of this movement is to make sure that our feet are alive as we try to confirm our keys. Far too often you'll see linebackers jump at the first thing they see without confirming their keys. This movement allows us to keep our feet alive as we confirm and reconfirm our keys without getting out of position. The next movement in our everyday drills is known as two-step. This movement is used once fast flow is determined. We want to work the same coaching points of pointing our toes forward, working off the inside balls of our feet. We also want to make sure that our feet are no closer than hip width as we shuffle, making sure that our shoulders and head are level with good bend in our ankles, knees, and hips. After two shuffle steps, we will lateral run, working to keep our shoulders square throughout the movement, and then after 10 yards, we want to plant and burst downhill. I use this drill to determine our player's ability to transition from a shuffle to a lateral run while maintaining square shoulders, as well as our ability to transition and burst towards the line of scrimmage. The last movement of our everyday drills are 45 degree angle drops. This movement is our basic pass drop movement. We'll always work at a 45 degree angle, again with our toes pointed forward, weight on the inside balls of our feet, working to be knock kneed. Feet will be no closer than hip width, with our shoulders and head level, with good bend in our ankles, knees, and hips.
This is a foundational movement for our linebackers because we shuffle to depth in the majority of our zone coverages. Similar to our shuffle drill, you want to look for linebackers that will start putting their toes outward as they shuffle. The next few drills will focus on developing our strike to help us disengage from blockers. The first drill we'll talk about is called quick hands. In describing this drill to my players, I use the analogy of boxing. Boxers like to snap a jab, they have relaxed arms, and they're very quick to their target. We begin this drill with our knees and toes in the ground. We want our hands up, relaxed, protecting our chest. We will move and snap our jab on our partner's first movement. Our aiming point will be the numbers, striking with the butt of their hands, with our thumbs up and elbows in. We want to make sure we extend our arms on the punch, then quickly reload, repeating three times. Things that you want to look for out of your players is ensuring that their thumbs up and elbows are in, that they're getting arm extension but not locking out their elbows, and that they're reacting quickly to the movement of their partner. I like using the analogy of boxing to help create a better visual image for our players, something that resonates with them that they can understand what we're trying to accomplish. The next drill in our strike progression is called punch and press. We begin this drill just like quick hands, with our knees and toes in the ground. We want to have our hands up, relaxed, protecting the chest. Our partner now will take a three-yard jogging approach. Again, we want to snap off a punch like a jab. Our aiming point, again, is the numbers, striking with the butt of the hands with our thumbs up and elbows in. We are working to arm extension, but now we will use our hips to help stop momentum. In this drill, I like to tell my players that they have to stop the momentum of their partner and that their partner has free reign to jog right through him. Our main coaching point is to incorporate the hips as we strike to help stop momentum of larger offensive linemen. This next drill is known as hip drop. This drill was born out of a clinic session with a defensive line coach when discussing loading of the hips. We begin the drill with your partner offset from your midline. On the coach's command, you wanna take a quick jab step, splitting the partner's crotch. As you step, drop your hips, similar to what you would do in a power clean. We wanna punch inside the chest, like you would in your quick hand drill. After your jab step, your feet should be balanced, not much greater than toe to heel. What we are emphasizing in this drill is utilizing our hips through a ground-based movement. Our off-season conditioning program incorporates power cleans and this drill provides a functional way to utilize that on the football field. The next drill in our progression is hip drop, run your feet. The drill is set up just like the hip drop drill. We want to offset from our partner. We want to make sure we take a quick jab step on the coach's command, splitting the crotch of our partner. As we step, we want to drop our hips like we would in a power clean. We will punch the inside part of the chest like we would in our quick hands drill. 
And the variation of this drill is we want to run our feet on contact. By running our feet on contact, we now incorporate this drill into a game type situation. The following drill in our progression is called hip lift. This drill incorporates all the movements we have previously talked about from our quick hands to our punch and press to our hip drop to our hip drop running of the feet into a full speed movement. It's important in the hip lift movement that your partner puts his hands on top of the shoulders as the linebacker approaches and drops his hips looking to run his feet throughout. We're trying to emphasize that actual hip drop movement going through at full speed and then running our feet through contact. A couple coaching points that you want to emphasize with your linebackers are you want to make sure that on approach that they split the crotch of their partner without widening their base. You also want to make sure that they don't come to a jump stop and then try to regain momentum through running their feet. We want to make sure it's one continuous movement. The next couple drills in our progression will deal with escapes after we make contact with blockers. The first drill we will talk about is fit rip. We will begin on our knees with our hands on our partner's chest plate. We want to extend by snapping our arms and ripping your backside arm up bicep to ear. We want to make sure after our rip we want to follow through all the way to the ground. The next part of the progression is called fit rip standing. Now we'll work from a ground based position where we'll start from a two point stance with our hands on our partner's chest plate. We will then snap our arms running our feet as we extend. We want to rip our backside arm bicep to ear and then step through the side clearing the blocker. The next aspect of our progression is punch rip. We will start separated from our partner in a two point stance. On the coach's command, you will take a quick jab step splitting the crotch. The first part of this movement will be very similar to our hip drop and hip lift drills. We want to punch snapping a jab like in quick hands, running our feet on contact. We want to rip our backside arm bicep to ear, and then step through clearing the blocker. As you observe your players, you want to ensure that they're using proper footwork. You'll see things like drop steps or widening of their base. We want to make sure that they're continually emphasizing the drills that we've done previously as we incorporate new techniques. One drill that you want to incorporate in your block destruction is steer the ear. This drill will work on defending against cut blocks.
The drill begins with your partner offset roughly two yards away. You want to shuffle step to the opposite side. We want to punch the side of the helmet aiming for the ear hole with the near hand and the shoulder with your backside hand. We want to drop our near leg back to help protect our feet and then steer the ear down and away. We want to shuffle through and settle ready for contact. It will be important to make sure that your players are striking down and away on this drill to keep their legs clean. The drill name, Steer the Ear, helps reinforce the idea that we want to steer the helmet down and away from our feet. For the cutter in this drill, it's important that he leapfrogs to about thigh height. The idea is that you're trying to deflect the cut block away from your body. The next set of drills will deal with fully functional movements, movements that our linebackers will use that combine all the different skills that we have worked on so far. The first drill that we'll talk about is popsicle shortstop. Using the popsicle sled as a blocker, we want to punch and engage using our skills we've developed in our previous drills. Using the same coaching points, after we clear the blocker, we want to attack the tennis ball much like a shortstop would in baseball. We want to use our peripheral vision to see the ball, scoop up with two hands while continually moving forward. We want to make sure it's one fluid movement. This drill helps develop the full functional movement applying all the drills in a game-like situation. One of the things I try to correct in this drill is to make sure that our players are running their feet through the bag. You'll notice that our players will pause on contact rather than accelerating their feet, shortening their steps. The following video clips are examples of drills being used in game situations. The first couple game clips are examples of our footwork. I make an effort to point out and correct using the drill names to reinforce what I expect out of the players, but also to make sure that they understand what they need to work on to improve. On this particular two-step drill, I would point out that I'm looking for our linebacker to keep his shoulders square. Again, the hip drop is a subtle movement, much like a hang clean. This was a new movement that we introduced this year. It was something that we used to develop and reinforce dropping our hips and creating power. Again, you'll see there's a combination of drills in many of these game clips. On this example of punch and press, I would ask my player to use a fit rip as a coaching point. The next are examples of our cut drill, steer the ear. Here you'll see number 95 on the left, defend a cut block from a lineman. The next example you'll see our free safety defending a cut block in space.
The following drills incorporate our base functional movements as part of the drill. The first drill we will review is our drop drill. The drop drill begins with the linebacker working to confirm his pass keys and then dropping between two cones. We will work both a shuffle and lateral run technique in the drill. We will settle at depth between the cones and work off the quarterback intentions keying the front elbow. We will break and burst when the hand comes off the ball and then catch the ball to complete the drill. You can work the drill with a shuffle or a crossover run. The example shown is of a crossover run. Make sure your linebackers understand that they should settle at depth. Here are some examples of the drill in game situations. This next drill is one of my favorites. It's called Seek and Search. In this drill, we're looking to work our peripheral vision as well as our eye transition in pass coverage. Starting on a line, coach will give a command. The linebacker will pop his feet, and once he gets his pass key confirmed, he will drop at a 45 degree angle between the quarterback and the receiver. You can shuffle or lateral run in this drill, working on both techniques. We want to try to maintain peripheral vision on the quarterback and the receiver with a dominant eye on the receiver. We want to settle and break inside or out off the receiver. On an outward break, we want to make sure we drive flat. On an inside break, we want to make sure we open up and zone turn, turning our vision back onto the quarterback. I like to utilize an old defensive basketball technique of on the line, up the line in terms of defending the passing lane between the quarterback and the receiver. Here are some examples of seek and search in game situations. We are looking to develop the peripheral vision as well as the ability of our linebackers to transition their eyes from quarterback to threat in zone coverage. The next drill is the reroute. In this drill, we want to teach proper collision technique and pass coverage. I draw a comparison in this drill to taking a charge in basketball minus the flop. Using a yard line, the linebacker starts at the bottom of the numbers. He wants to open and drop with a 45 degree angle shuffle. He wants to work to an intersection point to collision the wide receiver. We want to make sure we're thick and square and absorbing to disrupt his route. After the collision, we want to roll the hole or roll inside to our zone and making sure we transition our eyes to the QB. We want to use our body to create contact. We can also adjust this drill for linebackers that play a low hole technique or what we like to call our alert technique. Here are some game examples of the reroute drill as a zone player. These are clips that show our alert technique.
The next drill is box tackle. I prefer to teach tackling from a leverage standpoint. I will teach the contact portion, but I feel the majority of missed tackles are because of poor angles and poor leverage. We can work this drill from either a head up position or a leverage position. We want to start in a good body position and we want to approach the ball carrier closing the space and distance between you and him. We want to keep our feet alive slightly wider than hip width but no wider. We want to allow the ball carrier to make his cut and then we want to lateral step working to stay square on him. Once his direction is declared we want to shoot our guns. We can work this drill one of two ways. We can work our eyes across the body, hitting on the rise and grabbing cloth, or we can hit with our near shoulder using a profile technique on the ball carrier. You can also use box tackle as a non-contact drill using a two-hand underhand tag when completing the drill. The key is to be able to gauge the distance keeping our eyes up and maintaining a good body position at contact. The next drill is profile tackle or profile strip. This drill we will work more of our contact aspect of tackling. The linebackers will each start about two yards away from an agile bag. The drill will begin when your partner grabs the football. You can work your profile tackle attacking with the near shoulder, or you can work a profile strip attacking the ball. This drill works in combination with a number of previous drills in a close quarter setting. The final drill is tempo drill. This is a movement working our lateral run and shuffle techniques, looking to maintain leverage on the ball carrier. We want to work to keep our shoulders square to the line of scrimmage as we work our lateral run. All the while we want to make sure we maintain good body position throughout the movement. During this drill, we want to try to maintain a shuffle for as long as possible. We can work a crossover run with a quick burst step, but we want to settle back into our shuffle to be under control. I hope you enjoyed core linebacker drills. Should you have any questions, feel free to contact me with the information provided.